Welcome to the Yellow Brick Road. I am Jordan, and today I am doing a fan request video. David Pakman on the whole Bolivia situation. But first, please consider donating to Devin's Journey to Recovery. The GoFundMe link is in the description box. Click that link, read the story, check out the other donations, then donate yourself. None of the money goes to us, it goes to charity. So you'll be helping someone out when you donate. You won't be helping us out, fucking assholes. But you will be, you will be helping someone we like, which is one of our subscribers and his wife. So please, please, if you have $5 laying around or more, please donate to Devin's Journey to Recovery. Go fund me link in the description box. All right. So David Pakman. All right, let me just say something. David Pakman has a track record when it comes to certain foreign policy issues. You know, usually, you know, regime change. Anything like regime change, he seems to fall on a certain side. Or his views sound wishy-washy or like they're he's not committed to anything, which is a problem. Because even though this is 5% of his disagreements with the progressive left, it's such a major portion. The 5% of things that he disagrees with them on happen to be major fucking issues which cause all types of problems in the world. Also, it's just a, the most blatant moral scenario, right? Like you don't use your military or spies or whatever to take down democratically elected governments. Like that's the most blatantly like blatant moral answer ever, right? David gets those wrong. When I say wrong, I mean I think he purposely is selling his audience like eh, maybe it's not what we think it maybe there's some gray area here it's like <sighs> there's you can consider their gray area in a whole bunch of different things but the way he's selling it as is you shouldn't make up your mind and be instantly uh, upset at the u.s government it's like what why what is this what are you protecting here why do you protect the same narrative over and over again? But whatever, let's let's get to it. Let's see if I can critique some of this. Here is the psychopath, David Pakman. I wasn't really planning to do a segment about this, but there have been so many bad takes coming from, I guess what we're calling the revolutionary left. That's the non-pejorative term that we've, I guess, agreed on. He has to call him that because he wants to be able to call himself a progressive. You see, the, all the stances he takes in this video are moderate Clintonite style takes, but he has to keep the name progressive for his brand. So he has to name them, those guys who are the, would be the quote unquote actual progressives. He has to call them something else, revolutionary left, or he'll call like Jimmy Dore the toxic left. They, he has to call them names like that to give, to give the mess the, uh, Paint the picture to his audience that I'm a progressive and these guys are just, they're far out left or they're toxic left. Uh, to describe them about the resignation of Bolivian President Evo Morales that. Coup, cool, but you know, he's just saying resignation. It was a military coup. But David will tell you resignation. Just, just pay attention to the language. That's all I'm saying. I, I feel compelled to discuss it because. The right is just completely uninformed about Latin American politics. So I really don't have any message for them. Ron Paul. For me, it's a shame because uh, I assume that the evidence uh, and the likelihood of us being involved, it may be even being involved in precipitating the conditions that lead to these things, and in, in particular the CIA. And uh, of course, everybody knows our position on the CIA. They're, they're not our... Uh, we're not a fan of the CIA. At the, at the same time, the CIA has been around and has been involved. I could stop this video like every two seconds and just dismantle whatever the fuck he says. Really, we're 27 seconds in. Let's go. But there are a lot of people on the left that are either misunderstanding or just wrong in their conclusions about what has taken place in Bolivia over the last... Uh, close to 15 years, calling it in completely black and white terms, a military coup. So my goal here is to go through the whole story. Hopefully this will be enlightening. I know I'll be called a shill and all of this stuff, but who cares, right? I mean, we, we 
Uh, we get one shot at doing things the way we actually see them. You only live once, and I'm going to do the stories with the nuance that I think they deserve. Be you could, you know, since you're, you're a YouTuber, man, you can retroactively go back and say, oh, I fucked up here, I fucked up here. I've done it. Why can't David do it? Is he going to stick to this point of view, even if someone, even if there's tons and tons of evidence that show that his point of view is bullshit and or uh, State Department talking points? Someone's like, you can go back and correct yourself, David. Maybe he needs to be programmed to do that. Well, David lives several times. What we know, what we know as David. I'm sure he has. I'm sure he's been, uh, what's the word, re-downloaded through centuries and shit. Sure, look at that. Look at his hair. <laughs> <laughs> Trendy, but conservative. <laughs> it just slicks it in one area. Anyways. Because that's really what's missing. The problem is there is too much black and white thinking in general in politics. People are either good or bad. Uh, the military is either good or bad. Socialism is either good or bad. A politician is either a savior or a villain. And I know a lot... This is called someone muddying the waters, right? It's like, guys, you're not giving enough nuance to, the, to, the, in, to what's going on here. But he won't present you with all the information that I'm probably going to show you later. That doesn't come up in his whatever case he's making. I, I guess he's his, I guess he's what he, the uh, the case he's trying to make is that there is no case there. We don't know. We don't know anything. Step back. Just move away from it. Look here. I got twenty straight videos on Trump. Focus on that impeachment. Come on, guys. Of people who work in the the field of mental health, and they tell me, you know, Psychology. a lot of the people that come in that I see. They have in their lives all sorts of different things going on that at their root are often caused by black and white thinking about gray areas in life, about jobs, about relationships, about their childhood, whatever. By the way, what is gray other than a bunch of black and white all smushed together? See, if you take your microscope and you zoom in and you look into all the details, oh, I can see, oh, it's black and white, 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 black and white. But if you're a dipshit and you want to live way the fuck back here, all you see is gray. That's me uh, playing off of his little metaphor thing. Figurative speech, I guess. And I believe that the same is happening in politics and, and specifically with the Bolivia situation. So let's try to put that aside. Let's just all talk like reasonable people. No one's shilling here. Some people may be missing some of the facts. Some people may be coming to conclusions that are tinged by ideology. Let's not make these umbrella black and white declarations, and let's try to actually figure out what's going on. All right, let's hear his facts. So the Bolivian president, Evo Morales, was first in office in 2006. A few days ago, he resigned at the request or demand of the Bolivian military. And request or demand, we can argue about, but it's not actually the most important thing. Why? Won't that tell you if it was just a resignation or a uh, coup? <laughs> Doesn't that matter? Yeah. <laughs> Why did this happen? A few days ago, there has been rampant speculation about the most recent election being a bogus election. The Organization of American States put out a report saying that the election results were manipulated, including alterations, forced signatures, and wide-scale data manipulation. Uh, now, there is already a debate about this. Well, does that mean the election was bogus, or are these just reports of irregularities like you have in many elections, including here in the United States? But for me, the real story is actually bigger than this. And I want to ask you this hypothetical. I think election rigging would be a big thing. Uh, maybe has a bigger point. Here we go. If Donald Trump, during his second term, imagine he gets reelected in November and he gets a second term. Imagine that during that second term, Donald Trump changed the Constitution to allow a third term effective immediately. 
but then also claimed that since the Constitution was changed, his second term is sort of really his first term under the new Constitution, so he should actually get two more. And then during the third term, which is really his fourth, he loses a referendum to allow unlimited terms, and then his Supreme Court justices that he has selected say, forget about the term limits, you can stay as long as you want. Wouldn't we in that situation, as progressives who are for the rule of law, wouldn't we be begging someone to force Donald Trump out? This is full on advocation of the coup. I was going to go somewhere else, but I just heard that sentence out loud. I'm like, oh, this is full on advocation of, <laughs> of the coup. Oh, my God. Just realize that. Holy shit. But, you know, I'm not an expert in these matters, but uh, people, I guess, who do consider themselves progressives would uh, state what David's saying in a completely different manner and, in fact, say that Evo Morales was just following the rule of law. Ben, let me put to you some of the talking points that we've heard from people uh, who have been either justifying this coup or at least lending tacit support to it. So one of them is that Evo Morales uh, fraudulently, they say, extended his term. So there was a referendum yeah. on whether or not he could, he could run for another term. He lost, and, uh, and then a Supreme Court, even though he lost narrowly, a, the uh, Brazilian Supreme Court ruled that he could run again, and he did, and he won the first round. So, well, yeah, we want to so respond reader, to people. Render, so We're reading your, your comments here, by so the way. So, so, so the commenter, uh, Render onto Caesar, writes, Can you speak to the claims that Morales packed the Supreme Court, which ruled in his favor, to allow him to seek another term? I heard people claiming it was illegal for him to pack the court. No, well, first of all, I mean, this reminds me of how when you have a Democratic president and someone, there's an, there's an open seat in the Supreme Court, someone dies, and then the Democratic president tries to install someone in the Supreme Court, they're accused of stacking the court. That's how the government works. When you're president, you can put people in the Supreme Court. That's not stacking the court. But then we have these, these Democratic presidents in the U.S., these neoliberal centrists who are cowards, and in the case of Obama, he had this open seat and he didn't fill it, and then Trump filled it. Yeah. So it's like the right wing does it because that's what the president does, is that they're allowed to put people in the Supreme Court. So the thing about Morales is that he always operated within the confines, strictly within the confines of the law in Bolivia. He was democratically elected in three presidential elections. He won numerous democratic referenda and he usually won those in landslides. By the way, Evo Morales is the first president in Bolivia's history to ever get more than 50% of the vote in an election. He's by far the most popular leader in, in Bolivia's history. He's, of course, the only indigenous leader in Bolivia's history. This is a majority indigenous country. And this isn't to mention all of the things he did to benefit his population. He dropped poverty by more than 60%. Extreme poverty by more than 60% and poverty by more than 40%. He expanded social programs and education. He created a universal healthcare system similar to the kind of Medicare for all system that Bernie Sanders wants to create, right? And what's really incredible is that any time he won an election, they said, oh, it was fraudulent, even though, of course, it was a democratic fair election. Any time he put someone in the Supreme Court, oh, he's stacking the court. And then finally, when the Supreme Court says he can run again, once again, you hear people say, oh, that he wasn't allowed to do that. So it's an example of how at every turn he was always stymied, but he was nothing remotely like a dictator. OK. To be fair, you know, to be honest with the audience, I'm biased. See, I think uh, Aaron Mate, Ben Norton and Mar Max Blumenthal, the people at Gray Zone, are, you know, honest, you know, trying to do good journalists. I think this motherfucker is either a robot, corrupt, works for someone. Uh, it's I can't put him in the ignorant lane anymore. It's something where it's it could be pride, where you want to be an adversary or you want to be different. But it's like, these are blatant home runs. This is a Little League dad throwing underhand to a major leaguer, say, come on, hit it out of the fucking park. 
but he always gets these particular topics and it it le sounds like state department talking points straight up that's been this guy's deal syria venezuela and now bolivia and probably other places as well like should should we get rid of assad should we there's a lot of gray area to it What would you do if Trump had, you know, extra terms as president? Wouldn't you want someone to take him out? <laughs> He's basically saying that shit. Yeah. He's basically saying that shit. Before all this started happening, it's clear that he had the, the vast support of his people. And I think that's still the case. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> and what's so upsetting is that we continue to see it go forward like this. And so we have the New York Times saying it clinging to power the guy just won the election right they don't they don't want you to understand the situation they want you to think it's a dictator being driven out by freedom but he was willing to do the election they want him to step down but sadly finally when i this is what really bothered me is ultimately within 24 hours he said okay i'm gonna resign he's going to resign after the pressure and i i just personally feel that this is again the same scenario where we have a person who is recognizing no matter and, and you know what what they had on him or what he thought could happen that he chose to step down to save people the problems the strife the chaos the sanctions and the intervention and the manipulation that would destroy the country just like we're seeing and maybe he doesn't have the connections that people like venezuela or whoever else might that he's going to recognize that he's going to lose so he just steps aside but it gets worse. And all he said was, I resign my post as president. That's it. And, and guess what? I know you're probably shocked to hear that opposition lawmaker Jeannie Inez from the Democratic Union Party has started uh, stated that she will assume his presidency. Now, in case you're wondering, I'm not the only one to see this as a coup because it's obviously what it is. This is, this is uh, from People's Dispatch. We stand against the coup in Bolivia, a statement made from Noam Chomsky and Vijay Prashad. Now, as they say, the coup is driven by the Bolivarian oligarchy, which, by the way, is exactly what was happening in Venezuela. Right? It's the, this is why they, the, they oh, the pe the, oh they're, they can't find toilet paper and they can't find this. Well, it turns out the people, the, the oligarchy was completely in control of the businesses that got those there. Right? So that's why they didn't have those things. As people like Abby Martin made very clear. Right? What happened if Morales says, I'm not leaving? He's probably dead. Uh, his supporters are probably, well, they're already being fucked up, but imagine more. Holy shit. But let's continue. Okay. Now let's talk about what happened in Bolivia. Evo <laughs> more. Like, if you understand psychology, like, did you hear what he just did there? First of all, his audience probably doesn't like Trump. That's where I'm, that I noticed where he's getting most of his views when he shits on Trump. Like Trump put out 26 tweets in one hour. He's panicking. He's like the other Tim Pool or something. Just trash. So understanding that your audience doesn't like uh, Trump, he put Evo Morales in turn. <laughs> you put Trump in Evo Morales' place and you act like it's the same thing. At least what I saw, it, the 2019 election of Evo Morales, even if you say it's disputed, he won 47% of the vote. Okay, you say it's disputed. He asked to have another election. Who does that? If you cheat, if you're going to cheat an election, you just take the results that you won and you go with it. You don't say, do it, let's do a recount. <laughs> let's redo it. You said he cheated. Then he said, okay, let's do another election. Uh, ben Norton and Mate already explained, because they knew these talking points would come out, they already explained that uh, it's like, oh, this is what presidents do, do they not? They try to put people around them that favor them. But once again, this dude will muddy the waters because he's a cyborg or something. I don't know. He works for Skynet. He's a shill for Skynet. That's what that haircut style is called. It's called Skynet. 
Anyways, let's continue. Morales was elected in 2006, and people were excited because there were good things about his election. He is not, it's not black and white. He was the first ethnically indigenous president of Bolivia. That's great in a country that has such a large indigenous population. Why did it take so long to have an indigenous president? Fantastic, lovely. Are you going to answer that? Why did it take so long to have like an indigenous, like fucking farmer just be president? He just asked that question, did he not? Let me hear that again. Did he ask that question? Because there were good things about his election. He is not, it's not black and white. He was the first ethnically indigenous president of Bolivia. That's great in a country that has such a large indigenous population. Why did it take so long to have an indigenous president? Fantastic, lovely. He Why did it, David? And I'm not even playing identity politics, which is the, the direction, which is the point of him saying that. Oh, that's great. He's indigenous. Like, you know, it's a little bit more than that, right? Then the policy start. Like, oh, maybe we should help our poor out in this country. Then policy start shifting towards that direction. Let's see if he names that as a positive. He reduced poverty during his first term. He yeah. offered a much more sensible and pragmatic version of the socialism that has been espoused by Hugo Chavez and Nicolas Maduro. He invested in infrastructure and development. The other dictators, according to David. And grew the middle class. Great. But like with many of these Latin American socialists of the last many decades, he's uh, uh, increasingly authoritarian. <laughs> There's corruption. He was elected to a five-year term in 2006. He got a new constitution adopted while he was president, which allowed two terms. Then in 2009, he called for early elections, won, and said, hey, this is sort of really like my first term because I didn't complete the first term under the old constitution. We have a new constitution, so I should really be able to run again in 2014. It now, to be fair, do I agree with that? If, he, if everything he just said there is correct, uh, I wouldn't want uh, someone to do that. But I also understand. I completely understand. If you start, if Evo Morales is out there looking at his neighbors and shit being fucking cut down, it's like, oh, there goes, uh, there goes Lula. He's gone. Oh, Maduro, they're going after him. Chavez, oh, cool. Look at that. They're going after him. It's like, maybe these guys think, like, oh, maybe we need to, you know, sort of bend the rules a little bit in a way or try to gain some sort of advantage because. These motherfuckers do not want me here. They do not want me or any any ideas that resemble mine to be around in this area of the world. Maybe they have that thinking. Once again, that's just me going off of, let's say that's true. I mean, like, oh, I completely understand why people do that or why Morales would do that. I mean, the, the umpteen numbers of fucking coups in, in South America and Central America, even Mexico, include the Middle East that U.S. has been involved in and uh, that we've seen throughout history. Let's continue. It's not objectively bad to change a constitution, but one should not be allowed to stay in office longer than they were originally supposed to because of changes made under their watch. That's what authoritarians do. So this is already bad. He I mean, maybe I'll wait till the end because David's such a, he's a great, one of the all time great independent journalists or at least uh, independent you know, social commentators that, uh, <laughs> that uh, he'll eventually say, you know, the thing I was just sort of, you know, poking at let's let's see if he gets there he wins that early 2009 election calls it his first term so now he's allowed to run again in 2014 and a court increasingly under his control says yes he is allowed to run again this will count as his second term not as his a third or his first term not as his second he barely wins in 2014 and then says well let's do a referendum to abolish term limits altogether Wait, 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 wait. He barely wins in 2014. He got 63% of the vote. 
and 88 87.9% people uh was was the turnout 87.9% turnout and he won 61% of it am i looking at the wrong numbers or something i don't know yeah that or he just made that up or he might have mistaken it with the 2000 the most recent debate or most recent uh, election, my fault. But yeah, I'm still waiting for him to say those magical words, or ask ask the magical question, which I ask for all type of uh, coups or world events that seem weird. Let's see if he asks this question. So that I can just continue being reelected and reelected indefinitely. Voters reject that referendum in Bolivia. So what does he do? He appeals once again to a constitutional court filled with people loyal to him who say, yep, you know what? Running for office is a human right in Bolivia. Term limits violate the human rights of Evo Morales, so he can Evo run again, Morales. which he does, and wins in, a, in an election determined to have significant irregularities, uh, some characterizing it as completely bogus. So listen. Do I want the military to take control of the country now? Hell no. I'm from Argentina. I know what happens when the military takes control. It's bad. Is this a... He's still not asking the question. Also, uh, this isn't just, you know, just the military's taking over. Uh, someone like, uh, you know... Someone like the fuck, am I forgetting his name for? There we go. Someone like Max Blumenthal might uh, say something different about just saying, "Oh, just the military." All right. So, as I said, Max Blumenthal probably has a uh, disagreement with just calling it the military. So does Ben Norton. And this article from Global Research. All the crap I play in this video or articles I read will be in the description box, just so you know. It says, Bolivia coup led by Christian fascist paramilitary leader and millionaire with bleep bleep. We'll get to that part. This little caption reads, Bolivian coup leader Luis Fernando Camacho <laughs> is a far-right multimillionaire who arose from fascist movements in the Santa Cruz region where the U.S. has encouraged separatism. He has courted support from Colombia, Brazil, and the Venezuelan opposition. It's like, hmm, these guys seem to align. They always seem to line up with each other. It's very weird. Uh, speaking of this Camacho guy, what, uh, what they mean by uh, foreign support is this. Top Bolivian coup plotters trained by U.S. military School of the Americas served as... Attaches in the FBI police program in FBI police programs. Let's see. What does it say here? The United States played a key role in the military coup in Bolivia and in a direct way that has scarcely been acknowledged in accounts of the events that forced the country's elected president, Evo Morales, to resign on November 10th. Just prior to Morales' resignation, the commander of Bolivia's armed forces, William Calliman, suggested, suggested that the president step down. A day earlier, sectors of the country's police force had rebelled. Meh. Meh. Though Calliman appears to have feigned loyalty to Morales over the years, his true colors showed as soon as the moment of opportunity arrived. He was not only an actor in the coup, he had his own history in Washington, where he had briefly served as the military attaché of Bolivia's embassy in the U.S. capital. Calliman, set, Calliman sat at the top of the military and police command structure that has been substantially cultivated by the U.S. through WINSEC. The, mil the military training school in Fort Benning, Georgia, known in the past as the School of the Americas, Calliman himself attended a course called Commando y Estado Mayor. I, I, I think I read that right, actually. At the SOA in 2003. 
at least six of the key coup plotters are alumni of the infamous School of Americas, while Calliman and another figure served in the past as Bolivia's military and police attaches in Washington. Very interesting. So, since I just read that whole thing, you can probably already assume the question, you know, the question I want to ask that David does not. Apparently, uh, I, he still has two minutes left. Maybe he'll address it. That particular question. You should know by now, based off of me reading that shit. But let, let's hear if he gets to it. A black-white military coup? No. That's an extraordinarily myopic... And whoa, whoa, whoa. Do I want the military to take control of the country now? Hell no. I'm from Argentina. I know what happens when the military takes control. It's bad. Is this a black-white military coup? No. That's an extraordinarily myopic interpretation that completely ignores history in Bolivia for the last 13 years. Maybe I should have waited and read that. Oh, well, it, maybe it sounds better that I just read all of that and he just spit on it, essentially. He said, nope. If an American president did 25% of what Morales did in the election system in Bolivia, we'd all be demanding their removal. You'll hear comments like, well, this all happened because American banking and finance has ruined uh, these countries, including Bolivia. How does that force a president to change the constitution to remain in power longer? And how does it excuse it? These things are not as cut and dry as the revolutionary left is making them out to be. Well, my question is, how did he win? If they're like, we don't want you again, why are you giving yourself extra terms? And then it's like, oh, but we'll vote you in again anyways. <laughs> and apparently these irregularities aren't actually irregularities. They're somewhat, I don't know, normal? Almost like they were some sort of uh, independent you know, statistical guys that went over all the voting data. And the OAS claimed they saw irregularities in the election. They couldn't cite any evidence of that. Meanwhile, actual experts at the Center for Economic and Policy Research, CEPR, published a very good report, which I can get up here, that looked at a statistical analysis of the publicly available voting data, because the voting data in Bolivia can be accessed by anyone in the world. They found no evidence of irregularities or fraud. So the OAS claimed that without any evidence, the actual independent experts looked to it and found no evidence. And yeah, you know, not to mention, you know, he, he, uh, he asked for another, just do another election, right? Isn't this the same story they did with, with uh, Venezuela? They keep repeating these stories over and over again in all these different places in the world. And David apparently buys it every time or he's just, or he's just selling it. He could just be selling it. Before all this started happening, it's clear that he had the, the vast support of his people. And I think that's still the case. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> And what's so upsetting is that we continue to see it go forward like this. And so we have the New York Times saying it, clinging to power. The guy just won the election, right? They don't, they don't want you to understand the situation. They want you to think it's a dictator being driven out by freedom. But he was willing to do the election. They want him to step down. But sadly, finally, when I, this is what really bothered me, is ultimately within 24 hours, he said, okay, I'm going to resign. He's going to resign after the pressure. And I, I just personally feel that this is, again, the same scenario where we have a person who is recognizing no matter and, and, you know, what, what they had on him or what he thought could happen, that he chose to step down to save people the problems, the strife, the chaos, the sanctions and the intervention and the manipulation that would destroy the country just like we're seeing. And maybe he doesn't have the connections that people like Venezuela or whoever else might. That he's going to recognize that he's going to lose, so he just steps aside. But it gets worse. And all he said was, I resign my post as president. That's it. And, and guess what? I know you're probably shocked to hear that opposition lawmaker Jeannie Inez from the Democratic Union Party has started or stated that she will assume his presidency. Now, in case you're wondering, 
I'm not the only one to see this as a coup because it's obviously what it is. This is, this is uh, from People's Dispatch. We stand against the coup in Bolivia, a statement made from Noam Chomsky and Vijay Prashad. Now, as they say, the coup is driven by the Bolivarian oligarchy, which, by the way, is exactly what was happening in Venezuela. Right? It's the, this is why they, the, they oh, the pe- the, oh they're, they can't find toilet paper and they can't find this. Well, it turns out the people, the, the oligarchy was completely in control of the businesses that got those there. Right? So that's why they didn't have those things. As people like Abby Martin made very clear. So my request to you is don't fall for the black and white thinking. And of course, the revolutionary left will say anyone who is not loudly opposed to this is a pro-military coup, pro-American interventionist Yankee shill. Let's be adults, guys. Give me. Did, it, did, he, did he ask the question? Did he answer it? Yeah, I mean, he has to go over why that's completely false, right? Doesn't he have to go over the information and show you why it's false? And otherwise, it's like the people who show you the information, give you details, give you names, give you dates, give you all this shit. They're the immature ones. But I, I'm curious, what has David showed us? He's just saying, you just can't call it like this one way or the other. It's like, what is that saying? Show us why you can't say it's one way or the other. Give me a break. The world is not black and white the way you make it out. Evan Morales did some good things early in his presidency. He also is corrupt. We are also seeing a lot of the same things happen in Bolivia that we have seen happen in other places in Latin America, like Venezuela and others, when these authoritarian-leaning socialists um, uh, remain in power for longer and longer periods of time. Now, interestingly... Now, interestingly, for me, it's like, all he says he... I guess he's from Argentina or he lived there a long time. It's like, I'm guessing he lived on the, maybe the, uh, the more, you know, I have more money side of, you know, the South American countries. I, live, I have more money, you know, and the people I'm around seem to not really don't like when farmers become presidents and, you know, people on the outside are like, what the fuck is this? I can look at all the information. These guys seem like they're corrupt and they just want them gone because, whatever i heard people talk about lithium large amounts of lithium and he wanted to uh nationalize it for like to fund his you know fund his country his his, his economy just like venezuela with the oil syria's oil gone iraq same same narrative over and over again and you have guys that call themselves progressives <laughs> And we'll probably call you toxic if you call this motherfucker out. Please present the information, David. I'm, let me look. Where's his, where's a, show me more. How divided is the left? I don't know what, that says nothing about Bolivia to me right now. Where is it, David? Wait, I don't get it. Where is it? Where's his links to all the information that he's presenting to us? Where's the counter? Where's the uh, the counter argument other than things aren't always black and white? A lot of times they're gray, which means Evo Morales is a dictator. <laughs> that seems to be his argument. And yeah. The left and right share the existence of these factions who suffer from black and white thinking. On the right, you have these libertarians and small government people who think their black and white principles tell them everything they need to know. On the left, you've got the revolutionary left who suffers from you know, a version of the same affliction where they see a situation and they say, oh yeah, the military's involved, so that's bad, and a socialist is the president, and that's good, and he's an ethnic minority, so that's, that's it, that's the analysis, and anything else is completely unacceptable. You're pushed out if you don't fall in line with that ideology. They're giving you... Okay, the, maybe I, I'm awfully sure that the Blumenthal's and Norton's and Mate's, they might look favorably at a socialist president. I think they're looking more, eh, I don't even want to say that. They probably, they probably favor more like 
people they think are trying to do good. I think they'll openly favor them. But regardless, the information, they just put out information that always falls towards a correct answer. We wait 10 years down the line, we look back and like, here's what, ha here's the actual thing that happened, right? That's what it seems like. And as far as uh, when I played a clip from The Last American Vagabond, I don't think he, I think he's more like me where he doesn't, like, I don't favor one thing or another. It's all about, you know, he's basically just trying to expose corruption wherever it is. But I don't think he has any political leanings. He probably thinks they're all fucking dipshits. So he's got he's got twelve seconds left to bring up the question I want to hear, or at least a statement about it. But here we go. Tell me all the ways I'm wrong on the facts. Uh, I'm ready for it, but let's not play these. Just comp tell me about how I'm wrong about the facts. What facts? Plus, they did it in your comment section. I remember correctly. Uh, 2014, he won by 60%. Or no, he won 60% to 24%. That is not barely winning. Next comment, he barely won? Yeah, he's the only president ever to have gotten more than 50%, let alone 60%. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got ratioed for this. I dare you to come and tell me different. They just told you different. And they're showing you that you're full of shit. No, it's this toxic element of the left. These revolutionaries. <laughs> they have the information. Present counter information. Fuck. Only thing you said was about what Morales did with the Supreme Court and extending the amount of times he can run for office and all that shit. You didn't show that the that the elections were fixed or that they're, you know, you didn't show us what the irregularities were. What are you telling? You're questioning whether it's a military coup. It's like, is it? Is it not? You know, whatever you want to call it, resignation, military coup, whatever you want to call it. You know, it's like, no, you you can actually look up information and then tell us. At least present that information and show us like, here's why it's wrong, or you could just say on your own like, I just don't believe this. That's I I'd accept that as long as you're showing your audience the fucking information. Fuck. I can't go to your fucking description box and all I find is how divided is the left? That's your only link to something or your fucking social media accounts or how to buy your stupid fucking t-shirts or whatever. What the fuck did you sell? Mugs or something? Whatever the fuck this guy sells. Alright, that's it for me. Hopefully, scuffed, you enjoyed this fan request video. Once again, I'm not an expert, so refer to the comment or the description box where you can find the... Uh, Links to everything I put on here. Uh, by the way, like Last American Vagabond, you should. I definitely recommend that guy, hundred uh, percent. Also, you know, gray, the Gray Zone, but you guys probably already know about them. They'll be linked in the description box as well. Uh, yeah, subscribe if you like. Leave a comment. Tell me what you like, what you disliked about it. Tell me I'm right, tell me I'm wrong. Do that more than like or dislike. Tell me what was right or what was wrong about it. We all need help. <laughs> we need to help each other out. And another way to help each other out is Devin's Journey to Recovery. It is a charity. None of the money goes to us. and You'll be helping one of our subscribers out and his wife who had medical issues. And we don't have, uh, you know, guaranteed health care. Or... We haven't, we're not getting rid of medical debt yet, at least. So the best way to help, you know, people who have those medical debt issues is charity. And you can help out at Devin's Journey to Recovery. Go find me link in the description box. And with all that said, give this video. And by the way, oh, should I do this? Should I tell them to go to David's video and give him a thumbs down as well? Alright. <laughs> alright. <laughs> alright, alright, so 
only give this video a thumbs down. Say you wanna get him.